Welcome to FT Markets. He was hoping that she would do him a favour and raise US interest rates. But Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen has decided to stay pat, and that causes a problem for the European Central Bank President Mario Draghi, because as a result, the euro has risen faster than he wants. And he faces a tricky policy meeting this week to decide whether his quantitative easing program needs to be extended, expanded, or some other monetary policy tool at his disposal. Well, with me to discuss all these options is Michael Sneed, FX strategist at BNP Paribas. Michael, thank you very much for coming in, and thank you for bringing in a series of charts to help explain the ECB's problems. Now, our first chart is one that you have produced about the direction of the euro as it's been for the last few months and where you think it's heading. Do you want to, to explain to us what this means? Yeah, here we have uh, one of our FX models that we run at BNP Paribas. This is our BNP Paribas clear model, which basically looks at how an exchange rate should be trading based on macro variables, including central bank policy. And I think what's very interesting from this chart is it shows that the move lower we've had in euro dollar from 140 around about 12 months ago has been entirely in line with the Eurozone's fundamentals. The ECB has done a good job in getting the euro down to this level. Right. And you're seeing that the projection of the euro, I mean, you're taking it, what, into 2017? You're actually seeing that that good job is likely to bear fruit with a lower euro, mm. depending on all these circumstances coming good. Yeah, what this model allows us to do is take the macroeconomic forecast from BNP, BNP Paribas economists, insert them into the model and get a projection for where the exchange rate is likely to move. I think what's very interesting about the 2017 forecast is that we're looking for your dollar to move down towards parity, but that's going to be largely driven by Fed policy. Our expectations for the Fed to start raising rates in 2016. If they start raising rates in 2016. So, so there's a big issue there for Draghi. Let's look at where, the, where Draghi and the ECB have got to uh, with our second chart, which looks at the uh, positioning uh, in recent uh, months. Could you just help explain to us what this means about how whether the, whether the QE and the ECB policy is working? This chart is really useful for explaining some of the more recent price action we've seen in euro dollar, particularly since uh, the beginning of the summer. So what we have here is our BNP Paribas FX position analysis. And what we try to do here is get a gauge of how investors are positioned in the FX market. Now, the FX market, it's very fragmented. It's very difficult to gauge a positioning. So what we do is we look at five different indicators, bring them together, and summarize the position between a score of minus 50 and plus 50. Now, what's interesting is that we see euro is a score at the moment of around about 20. Yeah. So actually, the market has a long position in the euro. Yeah. Now, this is very different from back in the summer. Certainly. So in June, we saw that the euro was right down at the bottom of the rankings. And, and, and dollars, uh, the, the long positions are, are coming off as well. Precisely, yeah. That's the other big theme we've seen. Investors have really kind of capitulated on the long dollar view. So what does that mean in terms of either the euro's direction or, or QE and whether it's having an effect? Presumably, that means it's not where Draghi wants it to be. It's not where Draghi wants to be, and also we think that it means that the risks going forward are very much skewed to the downside for yes. euro dollar. A lot of the short euro dollar positioning has been reduced as people bought back euros, sold back their dollars, and now that sets us up for if we do get action from the ECB, if we do get better US data and stronger hints of action from the Fed, then there's a lot of scope for euro dollar to move as investors put those positions back on. Okay, so that's you've told us very, you've very helpfully told us about the kind of what's been happening recently. But the longer term, is QE really working? And your third chart tells us about the extent to which QE is is actually been been actually playing a pretty good hand for the ECB. Can you explain this one? Yeah, I think this is a very good chart for looking through some of the noise that we tend to get in the mm. FX market and actually look at the kind of real flows that are going through the market. So this is the Eurozone's broad basic balance of payments. So we're looking at the current account flows, the portfolio flows, and also the FDI flows. And I think what's interesting here is a lot of people, you know, they say to me as an FX strategist that the Eurozone has a very large current account surplus. That must be a supporting factor for the Euro. And what this chart shows is that it is. The green line, the green bars here are the current account. It's, we see that Eurozone continues to have a very healthy current account surplus. However, that is being very much offset by the portfolio flows, and in particular, the debt flows. 
So, that, so what we're seeing is that the impacts of ECB QE, the lowering of Eurozone bond yields, is encouraging Eurozone investors to put money outside okay. of the Eurozone. Okay. So that's the kind of the broader picture. But more immediately, Draghi is meeting with the ECB tomorrow. And a lot of what market commentators are talking about is the, the dovish rhetoric that's going to be coming from him. This is what they're expecting. But they've seen this many times before. So is there a sense that his ability to influence the market and bring the euro lower is, is running out of a novelty? Yeah, expectations ahead of tomorrow's events are really key. And we've seen expectations of further easing really ramp up after his comment in the previous press statement, where he's highlighted that the downside risks uh, to, inf to inflation. Mm. And this has really led to the market to think that actually the ECB is perhaps quite close to delivering more easing, particularly as since then we've had ongoing tightness of financial conditions and also we've had uh, a much lower inflation print uh, from the Eurozone. And the credibility of the ECB, is, is that something that Draghi has to worry about? I think the problem we've seen is that Draghi keeps saying that the ECB is willing to do more, mm. but we haven't yet seen any further action. I think that sets us up that if we don't get any extra policy tomorrow, uh, then that means that we could actually see the euro uh, move higher as people have to unwind some of those expectations. OK, we will see what he comes up with. Michael, thank you very much. Uh, so there we have it. Difficult time for Draghi. He's played a very good hand this year, but the question is, will he be able to convince the market that he has the tools to help the Eurozone and see its growth through?